This is Duke University. We know uh, particle physicists, high energy physicists, have been trying to unify the forces of nature. And in the process, they have developed a variety of theories about extra dimensions. And there's one of them called brain world theory, and that's B-R-A-N-E, as in a short for membrane, in which our universe floats in a higher dimensional world, in a five dimensional world. What's radical about it is that physical space, you know, it has its familiar length, width, and height, but in this brain world theory, there's an extra dimension of physical space. Now, all that is happening in high energy physics, and here's gravitational lensing that you associate with big objects, stars going up to galaxies, going up to the whole universe. What does that have to do with extra dimensions? Well, a colleague of mine, Chuck Keaton at Rutgers University, we worked and showed that when you look at microscopic brain world black holes that came from the early universe, so these are primordial, they too will have a signature in life. And that signature in principle would carry clues of this extra dimension of space. We can't get off our world and go into this fifth dimension, but gravity can. In fact, gravity can go between our world and this extra dimensional world. And so in a sense, you have to then use gravity as the key messenger, and you want to try and fingerprint it using light. A good analogy is, imagine you have a still pond, and you drop a pebble, and you watch that wave propagate out. A microscopic brain world black hole will do something like that to light. And so you're going to have peaks and valleys. And when that converts into something in your instruments, it means you're going to have bright and dark fringes, areas of higher energy, lower energy, as you measure this light that's coming into your instrument. And so it's going to put a particular type of wiggle, so to speak. And we currently have a telescope. It was formerly called a glass telescope after it's launched in space. It's christened with a new name, the Fermi a space telescope that can look for energies at this range that we are predicting the wiggle should occur. So this, this is always the irony, right? Uh, science, um, some of its roots can even come back. And in a sense, I like to think of it as broadening our understanding. And in many ways, light played a fundamental role in Einstein, quote unquote, correcting Newton's theory of gravity, which was around like for nearly 250 years. And by studying how uh, light, it's the speed of light, deflection of light, etc., Einstein saw the limitations and the range of vali validity of Newton's theory. And I think a similar kind of thing is going to be happening with general relativity. As we all know, the, the foundation of general relativity is that space is three-dimensional and you have one of time. So in its classical form, as Einstein did it, it's a four-dimensional theory. Here we are talking about a five-dimensional theory. It has many elements of Einstein's theory, but we clearly see now that it's going beyond what the four Farda laid down for us. My journey really began as a little boy in a tiny town, about 2,000 people, the tiny town of Dangriger in Belize. What was striking about it is not much electricity, but at night, oh, the starscape, they were glittering. And anyone looking up at it, you wonder, what is this all about? How did they get there? How do they stay in place? What really are they? So from a child, these were the kinds of questions that captured me. 
and, and I would say in a sense it was really the deep mystery and natural beauty of the cosmos that I couldn't resist. So at the deepest level, this is the kind of fuel that drives my spirit. And it continues into the present day, in fact. I'm still like that little kid. Produced by Duke University. Online at duke.edu.